So this is Crucial Python week three. Um, so today we're going to talk about NumPy stride tricks. And this is basically a way of manipulating NumPy arrays to change uh, multidimensional access to make it do things more efficiently. Um, all right, we have a logo. Awesome. Uh, I don't know how to use a Mac, but that's okay. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is just set up NumPy. I don't think I actually... And your scrolling is upside down. That's what it is. <laughs> Max. Okay, so let's say that we have just an array of sequential data. It's like this, numbers 0 through 127. And this just lives in a linear one-dimensional array. Um, so what you often want to do is, uh, like in time series analysis, you might want to run a sliding window across this time series and analyze small chunks of it at a time, right? So let's say we only want to look at eight numbers at any given time. If, uh, if there's no overlap in your sliding window, so you've got a buffer of length eight and it advances by eight steps at each time, then you can just take this array and reshape it into a two-dimensional array and then just access the rows. Right? So we can do this with NumPy reshape, and it'll look like this. Right? So I have a frame length of 8, and I've reshaped it. This negative 1 here just says, figure out however many rows I need to make my columns have length 8. And then I print out the numbers, and it's exactly what you expect. Right? So the first row is 0 through 7, second row is 8 through 15, and so on and so forth. So that's all well and good if you don't have overlap in your windows. But what if you want a buffer of length 8 and you want it to advance by 4 at each time, right? So each window is half overlapping with the previous. Uh, this comes up all the time, especially in audio signal processing. So the simple thing to do is make a new array and then just copy in the data um, one window at a time and then do the advancing manually, right? So if I set my hop length to frame over two, so I'm advancing by half a frame each step. I've made a little loop that just implements that kind of copying algorithm and then prints out the result at the end. And now you see that we have much more data, but it's the same shape, right? So the first row, sorry, first row is zero through seven, the second row is gonna be four through 11, third row is now eight through 15. So. Because you have the same data occupying multiple rows, right? So this number four, this guy appears in the first row and the second row. You can't get away with just a reshape, right? You have to actually copy stuff. And you can imagine that this gets fairly slow if you're doing a lot of copying. Um, and it takes a lot of memory, right? The smaller your hop length, the more memory you're gonna take to do this operation. But, if you're doing read-only access to this array, you don't actually need to make a separate copy. Really all you want is an interface to get it in kind of frame chunks. Um, so that's what we're gonna talk about today, is how to, how to do this more efficiently. So the simple thing to do is just manually index the buffer and just say, I want you know, t times the hop length to t times the hop length plus the frame length and just do that manually every time you want to access a window. Um, you can do that, but it makes your code kind of ugly and hard to read, and it just, you know, it's not exactly what you want, especially if you want to do something that involves multiple sequential frames. You don't have a nice way to access that. So this is where stride tricks comes in. So before I talk about stride tricks, we have to understand a little bit about how NumPy arrays are laid out in memory. Um, so NumPy gives you a multidimensional array. It's got a row index, a column index, and you know you can have more indices. You can go to depth and then however many you want. But in physical memory, these are just going to be a linear buffer, right? So the indexing is just a shortcut to say offset by the row length and then the column length and so on. And to make matters a little bit more complicated, NumPy can do this in two different ways. You can have row major or column major. And to make things extra confusing, the row major is called order equals C, and the column major is called order equals F. The C is not for column, the C is for C programming language, the F is for Fortran programming language. 
Sometimes you want one, sometimes you want the other. It depends on your application. But if you look at a row major array, so this would be order equals C, you see that the first element is A00, the second one is A01, the third one is A02. So it's the first row, and then the second row, and then the third row, and then the fourth row. All right? Column major, same idea, except now it's the first column. So A00, A10, A20. Um, more generally, if you say I want to index my array at i comma j, what it's going to do is take i times the row stride, so that's the number of bytes in your row, plus j times the column stride. And then if you have more indices, it's just going to be k times the depth stride, and, and so on. Okay, so why do we care about this? What we actually want to do is take our linear buffer, so that 0 to 127, and make it look like a two-dimensional buffer just by directly manipulating what it thinks the row strides are. So the row stride doesn't have to be an entire row's worth of data. It can be half a row. And by doing that, we're going to get a simulated version of this half overlapping sliding window, but we don't have to copy any data. We're just providing a new view to what we already had. So it's a lightweight interface to just give you a multi-dimensional access to a one-dimensional array. Um, so the tool to do that is the title of this talk, Stride Tricks. Um, just warning, since you're accessing memory buffers directly here, it's really easy to screw up. You might crash your program if you walk out of bounds and violate memory protection. Um, we're not going to be doing that because we're going smaller rather than larger than the row stride, but you do have to be careful when you do this. So that's the point. Okay, so how do you actually do it? So NumPy has a submodule called lib, and within that there's another submodule called stride tricks. It implements a few functions. I'm just going to talk about one of them today. Um, so we'll import that. So to really use this, you need to know the data type of your array and the size of that data type. And these are available through two fields, which are called item size and dtype. So here we see that x's item size is 8, meaning 8 bytes, and it's a 64-bit int. So 8 bytes. Cool. That lines up. So now that we know the item size, we can set up our row stride and our column stride manually. So to get the same behavior as we had before, I'm going to take my row stride to be the item size top times the hop length, so this many items. And then the column stride is just going to be one item, right, so eight bytes at a time. And then I'm going to use this, this function called as strided from stride tricks. So I'm going to give it the array that we had before, x. I'm going to tell it the shape that I want, which is the number of frames that I'd computed before. And then the frame length is the number of columns. And then the strides correspond to the rows and the columns. And then I'll just print it out. And you get exactly the same numbers that we had before, right? First row is 0 through 7. Second is 4 through 11. The difference here is that we haven't done any memory copying. This is all in the same data. So if you change the data here, it's going to change it in the original X buffer. Something to be aware of. But if you're doing read-only access, that's going to be fine. You can do the same thing if you want. Columns instead of rows, um, just change uh, which is your row stride, which is your column stride. And now we get a column advance of four and, the, and uh, from one column to the next. And the individual columns go from 0 to 34 to 34 and so on. And that's it.